Canyon introduced the Strive back in 2014 under the guidance of Fabian Barral, who's multiple downhill world champ and a dab hand on the old Enduro bike as well. We tested the Strive AL 5.0 race, which, if you know anything about the Strive, comes with their little shapeshifter, which sits just above the shock, uh, up on the upper link. Now, at the push of a button on the bar, this would change between their cross country or uphill mode into their downhill mode, which is slacker and lower. Canyon say that it changes the bike's geometry by about a degree and a half, raises the BB and firms up the suspension. In terms of pricing, the AL 5.0 is one of the cheaper bikes in the range with only two more strives cheaper than that and only one of which is another race bike, which if you're wondering what the race part of the title refers to, it's simply that this bike is designed by Canyon to be a bit more aggressive than the standard strive, so it's that bit longer and therefore more stable and better at riding faster downhill. Just as you can imagine from a direct sale brand like Canyon, they've absolutely nailed it in terms of value. Up front, you've got the Lyric RC, so it's not the RCT3, so it doesn't have quite as much as adjustment, but it has the same damper and same air spring as the top end Lyric, so no complaints there really. At the rear, it's another RockShox damper. This time, it's the Monarch Plus RC3 Debonair. So this means you've got a small blue lever, or low speed compression lever, which you can toggle between open, pedal, and lock, which will firm the bike up if you need to pedal on long road stretches or up big fire roads or anything like that. Canyon and Spectrum are our favorite tires on this drive. Up front, you've got the Minion DHR2 with a 3C compound, and at the rear, it's the Minion SS, uh, which is actually a semi-slick tyre but still has a pronounced shoulder tread. So rolls really fast but still feels like it really grips well in the turns. SRAM take care of the gearing with their GX 1x11 transmission. But Canyon have decided to spec a race face chain set as well as race face bars and a race face stem. So all top end kit. Other spec highlights include the DT Swiss E1650 spline wheels and of course the RockShop Reverb dropper post. Now, considering everything going on, the fact that Canyon include the shapeshifter on this bike, it's actually pretty impressive weight at just over 14 kilos, which means it doesn't kill you going up, but it is also really easy to throw around as you're riding down. Up on the hill, batter into a set of braking bumps, and the first thing you'll notice is just how quiet this drive is. Not a peep came from it, even when we were out hammering the hell out of it, on the hillside in Italy. Everyone was impressed with just how well the Strive fitted. The proportions just feel right. The seat tube's low enough that you can make the most out of a 150mm dropper post. The effective top tube's more than roomy enough for when you're climbing. The reach is a decent length as well, so when you're out of the bike, there's plenty of room to move around. You don't feel cramped on it. And once you add a couple of volume bands to the rear shock, suspension front to rear feels really well balanced. Another thing to note, is just how efficient and effective the Strive is at carrying speed. It was something that everyone picked up on and even when the terrain got really quite choppy, even when it was rough and mellow, the canyon still seemed to just keep generating speed, which was a really great feeling. So back to suspension balance and while it actually sits relatively deep into its travel, there is enough support, providing you've added those volume bands, that you are able to push and load the bike um, as and when you need to out of turns or up and over obstacles. So that in part is why I think it does carry the speed so well. The shapeshifter, using your bar mounted remote, lets you lift the bike up and tweak the geometry, making the head angle, seat angle steeper, firming up the suspension and raising the BB up a bit, or effectively raising the BB up a bit. This means you've got a more efficient bike to pedal uphill, which is great. That said, some of the guys actually found that they, they didn't even need to use it because it does pedal so well just in the downhill mode. This meant that it was more or less left alone and if you ask them about it, they almost think that, okay, maybe it's actually a bit of an overcomplication and is it actually necessary. My take on the whole shapeshifter thing is, I think it's a really good tool for climbing. I think it does really work well, but, I would argue that they could make their downhill mode a bit more downhill, so a slacker head angle, lower BB, and overall a bit more aggressive. 
even when you then shift it up and the bike's changed um, by I think it's a degree and a half in the head and seat angle, it's still going to pedal really well and you're always going to have that option to drop into an even slacker mode which will make the bike open up and even faster on the downhills. In terms of appeal, I think someone looking for a really good all-round bike, um, something that can more or less do a bit of everything, wouldn't be disappointed with the Strive. It's a really great overall spec and good value for money obviously as well. Great sizing and once you've worked on the rear shock a little, not a lot but just a bit, really good suspension balance as well. And it just needs to be a bit slacker for it to really come up trumps when things get steep.